Now, what was it like, like when National Geographic just came to you and said, Trudy, we want you to write these books? So they had the idea um, and really they left it up to me to do whatever I want, which was, they gave me power. I had power. They gave me power <laughs> to pretty much do whatever I wanted to do. So um, for me, it was um, always the best. I think the most important thing is to create an, an adventure, an exciting adventure that, that kids want to take, that I want to take, and I want to go on. So that that's where Cruz and interacting with his um, his friends really came into play. I want him to go to exciting places and have an exciting adventure and be, of course, chased by some mean villains. And, um, you know, all, and, and yet at the same time, you know, he's learning, he's growing, he's changing. Um, and so it was really important to be able to weave in a storyline that was personal to him. So he's on a personal mission to try to recover his mom's formula, um, as well as all of the things that he has to do with the explorers. He's a busy guy. He's a lot to do. I keep so it really busy. You have so many, like, little, I don't know if you call them gadgets or little technical things. I mean, they're, they're so amazing. What, can you tell everybody what some of them are? Sure. Um, you know, I'm a big, I'm a big Star Trek geek. Um, and so all of the stuff on Star Trek, I'm, was trying to come up with techno gadgets and things that, um, the characters could use. So they have, a whole range of, of things that they're outfitted. In fact, I realized the other day that um, they have so much stuff, I'm amazed they can move, you know, because I like their <laughs> stuff in their pockets. I've got like, they have a, they have a GPS pin, which, which projects GPS maps for them. So they can project the GPS map. They have sunglasses, which project the GPS map. Um, they have a, tra a universal translator, of course, so that, you know, should someone speak a foreign language, they're able to translate that foreign language. Um, there's, of course, Cruz has Mel, his drone, and, you know, every time he gets into trouble, there's Mel to help get him out of it again. Um, so and they have um, the uh, little fossil analyzer so that they can tell any rock how old it is, any bone how old it is, where it came from, um, and what kind of dinosaur bone it is. So that's really important. Uh, so yeah, as I go along, the great thing about writing a futuristic series is that you can invent something you need. You know, if you go, gosh, I really wish the explorers could do that. Oh, yeah, they can. I will just invent a little techno gadget and then they can, that will solve that problem. Um, so it's been very freeing to be able to in invent some of those. And there's a couple that show up in book six and seven that I can't tell you about. They're kind of secret right now, but... Um, but they were, they're fun. I'm trying to give them in, in each book kind of a little something new to take with them. That's why I said it's getting, they're getting kind of heavy now. They're carrying all this stuff around. So now was it going to be, so it's uh, seven books in the series. Was it always going to be seven? Yes, yes. Um, that was basically the only parameters that, that I was given from National Geographic was that they wanted seven books. And so I considered having the cipher split up into seven pieces, but it just seemed kind of weird <laughs> to have it seven. Eight seemed more, um, more like what Cruz's mom would do. She would split it like a pie. So in the tiger's nest, Cruz actually has to find two pieces of his mom's formula. Um, and of course, along the way, you know, occasionally he loses a piece. Um, the, his hollow, she has a hollow journal, so his mom appears in hollow form, and she tells him, she gives him clues about where to find the pieces, and occasionally the hollow journal kind of doesn't work, so he has to figure out how to fix it. Um, so I tried to give him a lot of things along the way that um, will, are stumbling blocks that he has to get, he has to get past to, to get to the next hurdle. Now, do you have a favorite one of the series? Um... It's always hard to answer. Um, I would say now that I have finished the seventh book, so I pretty much know everything. I mean, with the exception of revising this last book, um, I would say The Tiger's Nest is probably my favorite book of the of the seven because there are some things that happen in this book that really change Cruz. There's some things he learns about himself, about his family, um, about the cipher that um, change the direction of his life. And of course, there's something big happens to one of the characters. <laughs> again, try not to give too much away. Uh, something big happens to one of the characters that's very close to him. And again, that changes his perspective on everything. Um, so I would say in, that when you do that, when you have to write that, 
It definitely makes you more emotional as you're writing it. You're thinking about those people in your life that are important to you, your friendships, and it has an impact on you. So I would probably say this is the book that of the seven is my favorite. So now the last book, do you have the title yet? No, um, we've been bantering around the title. Sometimes titles come easily. I, the Tiger's Nest came pretty easily. Most of the other titles have come pretty easily. But in the last book, the problem is um, we have a good title, but it gives a, I think it gives a little too much away. So I've been trying to talk my editor out of that title. <laughs> so we don't have a title yet. We will see though. Um, keep, I will keep you posted on that one. But hopefully within the next um, six months, we'll come, up with, we'll come up with the right title. Sometimes it takes a while to come up with a title too. You, I make a lot of lists of um, what sounds good. Um, sometimes it's really obvious and other times you just have to, you have to just have to hunt for it for a while until it, you know, until you find the right, the right connection, the right, the right title. That's neat. So, um, we have a question. Cruz's mom's favorite book series is the Chronicles of Narnia. Does Cruz have a favorite series and what's your favorite, oh, favorite wow. book series? Wow. 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 So many questions. Um, I don't think Cruz has a particular favorite series, but he would be a Harry Potter kind of guy. Um, and Narnia, Chronicles of Narnia is totally my, my favorite series, which is amazing because guess where it ended up in this book? Um, you know, you know, yeah, surprise. I do. I love C.S. Lewis and I love Narnia. So that, that would be probably, um, my favorite series. Yeah. Cruz, I'm thinking Cruz could be a Harry Potter kind of guy, but he's also a realist too. So maybe a Percy Jackson might be a good one for him. He's an adventurer. I think he could, he would like a Percy Jackson series for sure. I think, I think Finn is happy. I think he liked your, he liked your answer. <laughs> <laughs> so now can you tell everybody, um, you know, a little bit about the different explorers? So we know you've talked about yeah. Cruz. So um, Cruz has, uh, several friends on his team. So uh, the explorers, I, I um, divided them up into different teams and the teams sort of compete against each other for different um, things. So who, um, Cruz has on his team, um, Sailor York, who, and she's from New Zealand. Um, and she's a very outgoing, fun, loving, um, energetic person who always says exactly what she thinks and um, is very brave, which is not, not me at all, but I love her. And um, then he has um, Brindis, who's from Iceland, who he has kind of a crush on. He has Emmett, his roommate, who is um, Chinese Canadian. And Emmett's a very, he, he's a computer nerd and he loves techno gadgets uh, quite a bit. And he's, um, he's not as daring as Cruz, but he's stronger than he thinks he is, which I love about Emmett. He's shy, he's a little quieter. Um, and he's a little more afraid to try things, but when he does them, he always succeeds. He always does a great job at that. And then he has Lonnie, who is his best friend from Hawaii, where he's from. Um, Lonnie doesn't start out with him in the book. She doesn't get into the academy, but she does a few brave things that get her into the academy along the way. So she joins him, I think book four, um, Lonnie comes to the academy. So, and oh, and there's Dugan, who is sort of the antagonist of the group. Dugan's a good kid, but, he just always seems to say the wrong thing at the wrong time. And he kind of complains a little bit when they have to do things or if something is not fair, you know, if something happens to the group, Dugan is gonna be the one to say, that's not fair. Um, so, but he's also the one who uh, with Cruz really, their relationship develops well over the series. So they get to know each other more. Cruz gets to understand why Dugan is kind of a, he doesn't quite fit in. He's a puzzle piece that doesn't quite fit in. And there's reasons for that. And so Cruz and Dugan actually get to be um, pretty good friends. And that was really fun developing that relationship um, as things went along. And of course, there's, you know, 20, 18 other explorers along with these guys, too, <laughs> which, which I try to weave in and out. Some are more important than others. Um, but it is it was a challenge because you realize, OK, 24 explorers, I am going to I don't want to drown people and get them lost with so many kids. So I tried to keep it to about, you know, um, six main kids and then a fringe group of five or six more. 